Hi guys, it's May the 18th now. The weather's been quite warm now for the last few nights. It's been over 10 degrees for uh, a good couple of them as well, so I think it's time to get everything outside. I want to get them out of the greenhouse because watering that thing has been a pain. So as soon as they're out here and they've had a good water to settle them in, I can leave them to it. And hopefully the weather does its side of the deal. Thank you very much for the comments in your last video as well about me uh, broad beans here that are in full flower. I have now uncovered them because apparently they do need pollination from uh, flying insects, bees and the like in order to produce the uh, veggies. So uh, yeah, I've got those uncovered now. And as you can see, being undercover, they've uh, been well protected. There's a little bit of uh, flea beetle damage. You see the semicircular cutouts on the leaves there. And some of these broad beans are throwing out some absolutely beautiful flowers at the minute. Uh, now I've uncovered those, hopefully the pollinators can get to work on them. Lovely. Right, Operation Plant Everything Outside is now well underway. Um, I'm going to uh, get these out now. This is the uh, asparagus. Now they've been sat in the greenhouse and to be honest with you they have suffered a little bit. Uh, it's probably got much too hot in there for them and uh, a lot of the leaves have started to brown off and go a little bit funny. So. To start with in the asparagus bed here, I've got a few gaps where a few of the crowns never made it. So I'm going to fill up those and then I'm going to, along the back edge, plant the rest of them out as well. Put in a little marker as well because during the winter when they die back you don't always know where they are. So it's best to know that so that you don't get your hoe in there or destroy them. Now these asparagus have uh, been grown from seed this year. Uh, I can't guarantee that there's only one seed in that pot. There looks like two in there. But I think trying to split them at this point might be... Uh, a bit detrimental to them so I'm just going to whack them in as they are as you can see they're fairly scruffy affair but you know once they're outside they should sort themselves out really so I'm just going to plant them as they are I don't have to worry about you know like you would with a bare root crown where you build a ridge and that because these are already in compost I'm just going to plant them out as they are you can see as for a root system on these they do produce these large white roots that they sort of spread out eventually to create like the spider legs that you'd usually see on an asparagus crown so these are well well ready for planting now, you don't want them to get too pot bound or anything like that. So I'm going to whack them in. They'll get a good dose of water before uh, I leave today and uh, then they'll be on their own. Now one important onion related job at this time of year is to uh, keep checking your plants for these things. They're the flower heads that come up on them. Now it's not a great thing when this happens because when the onion flowers it's not going to grow anymore. Um, what you can do is you can remove that to prevent the plant from using up all of the energy in the bulb in producing the flowers and reproducing. But um, yeah, for that particular specimen, it's not going to grow anymore on the bulb, so um, you know you can harvest those ones out now. Which uh, it can be a bit of a shame, but um, that's what the plants are designed to do. You know, the plant wants to re reproduce. Onions are uh, biennial, so they flower naturally in their second year, and a lot of onion sets that people buy are naturally in their second year anyway. So if they're not heat treated or if the plant comes under stress or anything like that, even a cold snap can trigger it because the plant thinks it's autumn. So um, yes, unfortunately, even though the rest of the plant looks really healthy, it won't grow anymore. And if left to its own devices, it will throw whatever it has grown into producing and reproducing the seeds. So whip those off and then harvest those bulbs, leave the other ones to grow on. It's also important at this time of year to check your uh, garlic plant for these little things here. These are scapes, or again, the uh, flowering part of the plant. Again, the plant wants to reproduce, so it'll put these up, which will eventually produce uh, like tiny little garlic bulbs as part of the reproducing cycle, reproductive rather. Um, what you want to do is you want to take these out, you want to snap those scapes off as far down as you can without damaging the rest of the plant. And the scapes themselves are actually really tasty. You can uh, eat those, fry them off, do uh, lots of different things with them. It's not as detrimental as onions as well. Once you take that off, the bulb will continue to grow. 
but it is important to remove them um, to prevent the uh, garlic from putting all of its energy into reproduction. Those were the garlic on uh, another chap's plot actually, I just asked if I could record those. I've been through all of mine, had a good look through and I can't see any yet that have started to uh, go to flower so we'll leave these ones be for a while, they seem perfectly happy. Just remember to keep giving them a uh, good top dressing, something like uh, chicken pellets, something like that just to keep them happy and healthy. And similarly with my onions as well, luckily none of these have uh, started to bolt just yet. These were planted out in the spring so they've not had as long in the ground but uh, yeah they're all looking really nice at the minute. If a little bit weedy. Okay there's all the fat hens coming out. Oh fat hen grows ever so quickly, goes to seed even quicker and uh, becomes a real pest if you don't get it out. Luckily it's only shallow rooted and you can get rid of it. It is apparently edible but I'm not going to give it a go. Now some of you might remember a few weeks ago I took the quite drastic at the time measure of uh, snipping the tops off my peppers and a nice big tall pepper plant and just basically cut it right down so there's only about three leaves left on it. Um, I also left some plants that I didn't cut as well so here's an example of one of the plants that was not cut at the time. This one is uh, Serrano hot chilli pepper. Now as you can see on this one we've got one single stem growing quite tall you know the plant looks healthy and everything like that if a bit you know lanky um so yeah i mean that's that's the result of not cutting out your chilies so you know you still get a really nice plant now in comparison exactly the same time exactly the same stage of growth i did the same i did well i cut the top off this one now i don't know if you can see but that is where i chipped cut the plant off so you know that would have been the equivalent of taking this plant and cutting it about there taking all of that top foliage off which seems really drastic but as you can see the plant since that being cut off we now have one two three and then we're getting a fourth here large growing stalks um, so really what that's done is it's diverted the energy away from the growing tip and allowed the smaller shoots at the side to grow out so that is a much nicer bushier plant so even though you might think that you're knocking your chilies back by doing this and it does seem really drastic that's the difference with trimming without trimming and as you can see overall height of the plants there's not too much in it really and uh, this one you've got a much bushier plant that's going to produce more leaves more flowers more energy so yeah i'm quite impressed with that i wasn't convinced at the time but you know the results speak for themselves there we go Well, boys and girls, well, I have gone a little bit chilli and pepper crazy this year. I've actually repotted there 20 of them. I had something like 30 plants, but I'm going to stick a load down the bottom and see if anyone else wants any. So, um, yeah, there's six different types in there. Don't ask me to name them all. Um, Serrano, KN, I'm going to try anyway. Habanero, California Wonder, Patio Sizzle, and something sweet can't remember so yeah anyway they're in there now they'll live in the greenhouse this year uh, I was going to try planting some outside but uh, I didn't have great results last year they did grow they were all right but especially the sweet chilies didn't do that well sweet chilies sweet peppers mm. well this comfrey is uh, definitely going down a treat with these bees anyway it's absolutely covered in them must be 20 bees flying around this right now enjoying those flowers Hello, I've been working away uh, steadily all day, it's about 7 o'clock at night now, believe it or not, and I've been here since about 8 o'clock this morning, so it's a bit crazy how fast time flies to say when you have a look around and you go flipping out, what have I done? But, you know, I say little and often, lots and often at the minute, it's uh, sort of keeping on top of things. I'm just in the greenhouse at the minute, I've been having a bit of a flip around, because uh, obviously there's a lot of plants that have gone outside, so now I can put, you know, some grey bags in and like move a few bits and bobs around and that. So... Um, yeah, there's that big wooden frame in here, it was slowly sort of, this is the uh, end greenhouse. So there was a big wooden frame right here, I've got rid of that because it was slowly falling apart and it was huge so it was taking up loads of room in here, which can be better used for other things. Now, what I've started to do here is I've put a uh, grow bag tray in there with a grow bag on pot, on, on pot 
and then tops on po tops on pops. It's been a long day. Grow bag tray to collect any water. Grow bag and then three plant pots, which I've actually cut circles into the top of the plant uh, grow bag, and that's going to be me uh, Cape gooseberries, I think. Which I am going to grow again this year. Why not? Okay, so we've fast forwarded about uh, 24 hours there because uh, I ran out of time yesterday. Um, it was a bit manic, everything was going crazy, everything was going great, don't get me wrong, because I was really enjoying myself, but I didn't get the camera out much. So I'll just take you on a bit of a tour around now to show you what I've done. This is the second plot at the minute, shall we call it. Um, this is the one that was covered in rubbish and, you know, shopping trolleys and all sorts of other crud um, <laughs> last year. So, as you can see, I've just been trying to keep on top of it, really, just, you know, make sure that the weeds don't get out of control or anything. Uh, just trimming down what I can. Uh, there was a lot of brambles in there which keep showing up, so every time they show up I'm trying to dig them out and, you know, keep on top of it that way. I've not really got the time and the energy to dig it over at the minute, but um, if I keep on top of it then over next winter maybe, or possibly if I find myself with a bit of time later in the year, then that's what I'll do. So, it's just all, you know, it's all strimmed down, it's all kept clear. Um, there's a bit of a patch here that I've seen quite a few interesting plants in, some wildflowers and things like that, so I'm just going to... You know, leave those, let those grow out a little bit. Um, hopefully not go to seed because then they'll start spreading all over the place. But yeah, you know, it's uh, compared to what it did look like, it's certainly looking uh, a lot nicer up here. So yeah, this is the uh, just an overview of the second plot without my head in the way. So as you can see, it's absolutely a huge bit of land. Um, that's where I've had my bonfire there, and that's that patch of ground in the middle that was really badly contaminated. So yeah, it seems to. Uh, you know, it'll just do its thing for this year. Hopefully we kind of regenerate a little bit and I might be able to do something with it next year. I do want to try and get a few of me uh, Atlantic Giants in. I figure maybe if I put one or two in here, keep the rest of the plants down, you know, they'll have plenty of room to be able to uh, sprawl around. Uh, and possibly, yeah, some sunflowers as well. Right, moving over to this area here, which is the double water butt miniature greenhouse setup. I've not had a massive amount of rain really to test it properly. I've got probably about two inches of water in the bottom of there and uh, the other one doesn't seem to have any in so I need to inspect that because it might have a, a little hairline crack in it or a leak somewhere but we do not know until we have a look into the tomato greenhouse at the minute I've just got the nine tomato plants growing inside in here so the gigantomos are uh, just coming along they'll be potted on soon because um, they're not going to last long in those pots and uh, Gardener's Delight, Yellows and what were the other ones, Moneymaker just seem to be coming on alright, these bits at the bottom is just where I've been uh, pulling out the suckers and everything like that and left them on top of the pots because I'm a bit lazy um, and then there's those, so yeah these have been outside now for well over a month uh, I say outside in the greenhouse and they're doing absolutely fine so yes, that's not a bad stage to be at keeping up with the weekly feeds on those just around this side as well, that's had a bit of a tidy around. That's my little water butt which is feeding off this greenhouse here. That's about halfway full, so not too bad. Okay, and then we'll have a quick walk into the oh, the oldest of the greenhouses. Been quite a lot of changes in here because I've been uh, fairly busy doing things. Leeks are ready to go out now. As you can see, they are uh, about the thickness of uh, what, five or six mil or something like that. And they don't want to stay inside much longer, they're not going to uh, benefit from it. So I'll get those split down and planted out probably next week. Uh, we've got some of the Cosmos in a pot there and some other of the, uh, other of the leeks at the back end there. Three, uh, how many? Six of me uh, sweet corn plants. This is the Golden Bantam, the one that didn't germinate too well. Um, I did put a full tray in, but I've got rid of the rest of them because the uh, kernels just went in and went a bit sludgy. That's uh, an overflow of chilli plants. Um, might try and find somebody to give these to, or the, you know, or do something because they're not going to end up uh, being potted on. Um, and there's some little habaneros. They were some chilies that got uh, put out. I got see uh, flipping out, Matt. Where's the words? I put the seeds out uh, a lot later than the other plants, but uh, you know they seem to be coming on. They've been potted on into slightly bigger pots. These are me Ferrari uh, dwarf French beans. These have all started to germinate quite well now. I've got all but one has fired out of that one, him in the back corner. These uh, these will only have a week or so in here, once they start to get to a decent size. Not much bigger than that, you know, they'll just be a uh, nice little plant. I'll get those outside. 
the dwarf French beans don't need any sort of support, they self support, so if you plant them quite densely they sort of uh, keep each other, you know, upright. Uh, I've got a big tray of marigolds down here which uh, hopefully they'll be ready to go out soon. And these ones are me runner beans, which uh, I'm not too sure about actually, I've got a bit of germination coming out on them, I'm sure they'll be okay. Right at the back there, I've got me uh, me three aubergine plants. They're uh, they've slowed down quite a bit since I've put them in here actually, but uh, they must just be getting the roots down into these new parts. They certainly look healthy enough. Any discoloration or anything on the bottom leaves like that's just uh, to be expected really. I, I can't see any problem with that. I always look towards the uh, growth towards the centre of the uh, plant to see if there's any major problems. As long as it doesn't look spotty or fungal or anything like that, they should be all right. So yeah, they're uh, they're in. Um, butternut squash. So one, two, three, four have come up out of my butternut squash, which is more than enough for me. And then I've got some of these sunflowers here, which you can see by the yellowing on the bottom leaves need to be uh, potted out, potted on, put outside, because uh, you know they're going to start to run out of resources in them little pots soon. The uh, tomatoes that I grew from seed this year. Not doing too much, you know, from there I might get five or six nice tomato plants. Strawberries, did I say strawberries? They are strawberries. <sighs> Any road. And then I have got a total of, I think it's 21 chilli plants, six different varieties. So, yeah, they all seem to be doing alright. Um, some of these little bush uh, patio scissors are looking particularly nice. A lot of them uh, have been uh, deadheaded and are just sort of bushing out after that. So, yeah, you can see some of these where I've took the head out of them, and then they're just starting to generate a lot more growth, which is lovely. So, hopefully, we'll get plenty of chilies. And these are my sweet peas over here as well. These are all about ready to go outside now. I've got to get a bit of a wigwam or something for those to climb up. As you can see, they've started to grow out the uh, little tendrils. That's what they'll use to wrap around uh, and grow up uh, anything. And if they're left in here too long they'll wrap around each other and grow up each other so you get a right tangled mess. So they're about ready to come out. Moving downstairs here. These are the mini bell tomatoes. I think these are looking uh, quite nice at the minute. Lots of luscious green growth on these. So uh, they've just started to flower as well. I say they've reached this height they'll start to bush out now. Do not want to pull out the suckers on these because uh, that's what they're designed to do. Just create a small little bush. So I've got four of those which are growing away quite nicely in here. All looking happy and healthy. Some of them have got the uh, flowers coming open. So that's nice. And then the pink fur potatoes. These quite easily could go outside as well but uh, I'm just going to leave them in here at the minute because I've got the room in the corner. Um, yeah, so they've got about another six or seven weeks and I'll be pulling those out. Oh, so lots happening in there, which is nice. <sighs> Just been strimming the grass actually, I feel knackered after that. And then one of the greenhouses that's probably seen the biggest amount of changes because I spent a couple of hours just sort of moving everything out, reorganising, cleaning up and everything like that, is this one. So, as you can see, I've now got one, two, three small units. These were three high. I've knocked them down to two high and then with the bits that I've taken off two of them I've been able to build another one which is nice. Because uh, if I'm too high I'm up into the uh, eaves is it. So, you know, it makes things a little bit uh, a little bit more practical. Mind me, I had a spider webs and such. Plenty of them. Um, so I'm going to have one grow bag and another one here. Um, I've cut holes in the top of the grow bag and I'm going to use these pots. So the grow bags are fine by themselves but obviously if I put a pot in, put a few more holes in the bottom there, fill that with compost and then this is the Cape Gooseberry but then two of those are going to go in there in that compost and then they can root through and really feed from the bag as well and the bag's not going to suffer as much evaporation so hopefully that will work, reduce the amount of water in. It's also sitting in a, a sealed tray as well so any water that leaks out of the bag will be retained as well. So yeah, my two, uh, my two Cape Gooseberries there, they're going to go in. I'm also going to have two Gherkins and two Cucumbers as well. So hopefully they'll, uh, they'll get away quite nicely. Not a huge amount to report other than that in here. 
Uh, I've got some of my Lolo Rosso lettuce. I can probably start pulling some of those now. I'm not going to uh, plant these out, but um, if you imagine, just uh, you know, take those. I'll probably only need two or three of those, and I've got myself a little munch, haven't I? And at the front there, that's kohlrabi. Moving swiftly around, some uh, some more marigolds there. My hollyhocks, uh, whatever the heck those flowers are. I haven't got around to doing anything with them. Mimulus. These are the. Completely lost the word. Cucumbers and the gherkins as well. They look very similar at this stage. Obviously, uh, the gherkins are just a cucumber that you'd harvest earlier, but these ones are specifically selected to make a nice little baby cucumber. Um, over here, there's the rest of my kale, my cauliflowers, and my broccoli. That's all been, uh, you know, that'll be ready to go out probably next week again. I've just run out of room this week. Room time, and then kohlrabi as well. And finally, I've got some little uh, sunflowers there, and then an Atlantic Giant pumpkin at the back there. I've got quite a few of these Atlantic Giants. There's another one here at the front, so hopefully uh, I'll be able to do something. And another thing I've picked up this week, I've been to Morrison's, I must have been feeling flush, but I've spent five quid on this, which is uh, Honeysuckle. They did have cheaper ones, but they were all really boring looking, like, you know, plain white flowers or something. So this one really looked quite special, so I'm going to get that one in and that's going to trail up the fence. I can't decide on the fence whether to have it along this back edge here, and it can sort of trail up that frame there, or whether to try and grow it uh, up this back end here. You know, if I bring one of them Aris panels, I can put that in there because there is a bit of a gap in the hedgerow, so that can sort of grow up there in the corner and hopefully fill up that area. So if you've got any ideas on that one, let me know. I have had requests to see me blueberries. So uh, here they are. Now, these were these are first year ones. I think I got one from the range and the other one came from Blooming Out now I've got to think. Home base, B and Q, Wilco. Uh, that was one of the bigger stores. Um, so here we go now then. This is the um, blue gold variety. As you can see it has flowered and I've left the flowers on which is probably not advisable for the first year because uh, we want to put that to put in uh, energy into growing. It's got all of this in here which is just trimmings for me. Uh, I've been around with the strimmer. You'll see a lot of that. And then that's the other variety there which is called Patriot. So again you know that one's doing its, uh, its thing. It's not flowered at all but it has got lots of healthy growth on it and buds. So yeah we're happy with that. Here's my me, uh, me pond. Um, I put that in really, really quickly. It took me about an hour. I dug a hole, lined it with plastic, and uh, just let the rainwater fill it up, really. Uh, now the, the pond weed, or whatever that's called, has managed to find it now. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, whether it's oxygenating it, deoxygenating it, swamping it, I don't know. Um, there is some signs of life in there. I've, I've got snails in there, believe it or not. I've got water snails. So, um, again, whether they're a good thing or not, I do not know. But, uh, yeah. That's my little, uh, my little pond. Uh, these hedges are absolutely desperate for sorting. But uh, now, with my hedgerows, I've got all of this one running down here. Um, I've got that one all the way down the back. And then I've got this one coming all the way up the front edge here as well. So I think I might need a petrol hedge trimmer. I might go HSS or something and go and borrow one. Right then. The uh, brassica cage. I've still not got round to... Uh, Planting up the other half of that, which is a darn shame, but uh, what can I say? I'm just useless. Oh, my ground sheet's moved. Why are you moving, ground sheet? You need to know who the boss is around here. So, Brussels sprouts are looking absolutely fine. Um, there is some small evidence that someone's had a go at them, but um, it is very minor. So, you know, there might have just been a slug or a snail got in here. Um, obviously this weed membrane creates a nice habitat for them so while it keeps the weeds down I've got to see if I'm creating an environment underneath there for slugs and snails and such so you know we shall see how that one goes anyway obviously something's coming out of the soil isn't it to have a nibble and then in here the cabbages as well which are doing uh, just dandy 
So, yeah, they're all in there growing away. I'll say they've only been in for a week. So, you know, you've still got to let them uh, get the roots down and really get growing away. Nice smooth action on the door there. Schmool. Right, um, you'll have to excuse all of the grass clippings and such just because I've just been round with the strimmer and a lot of those bits will go onto the beds. Like I've said, it don't bother me at all. I just think of it as extra nutrients and mulch. Now, what I have got out here is I've got my courgettes at the back there. They're out. Uh, that's another two courgettes and these are two uh, petit pan squash. So I thought that it was time for those to go out. So I put them out. What else have I got? Oh yeah, down here I've got a marrow. Marrow. So um, yeah, hopefully they'll do all right. The yellowing leaves, they were going yellow while they were in the pots in the greenhouse, which is probably just a sign of them being a bit pot bound and a bit short on nutrients. So, you know, now that they're outside, I expect them to uh, take a week or so just to uh, re-establish some shelves and that shelves? Re-establish some shelves. <laughs> Start again. And then uh, they'll be away, basically. You won't be able to stop them. Um, so yeah, that's good. Hiding in amongst the daffodils here. Oh, let's go in for a closer look. Here, as we rummage amongst the undergrowth created by the daffodils and narcissus earlier in the season, you can see black magic sunflowers establishing themselves, disguised away from the predators. So, yes, they, um, so, yeah, as you can maybe be able to see, I've just hidden my sunflowers in here amongst the, uh, the dying daffodils and all the rest of it. Which, you know, they, uh, they've survived a night anyway, so yeah, they got put in yesterday. And uh, I've even paid this ladybird here to sit on top of this stalk um, as a sentry. Zoom in on you, cause you look so pretty. Look at you. That is uh, some sweet corn. They are quite small, they're a lot smaller than I've ever planted them out before. Um, and if you can see them there, some of them have only just started to show up. But, um, yeah, it's about that time of year. I was a little bit behind on sowing them this year. So, what have we got? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in there. So they're in kind of like a, a block pattern. So, yeah, hopefully they'll be absolutely fine. So that's sweet corn outside. That's my overflow from my brassicas. Uh, some of these actually seem to be doing better than those in the brassica cage, so I'm hoping that that whole thing wasn't a complete waste of time. If it was, I can just uh, turn it into a fruit cage next year or something, which I might do anyway. So, that's over there. And this is under here. So yeah, some of those cabbages here down the front, and their bustle sprouts in the middle. And to be honest with you, I can't remember what those at the back were, because I didn't expect them to make it. Um, but they are surviving, so that will be a nice little uh, surprise for me. And then, uh, I just couldn't bring myself to throw them away, guys. I really couldn't. So, there's some tomato plants here that have come directly outside. Um, and they seem absolutely fine. They've been out here for a couple of days. You know, I've even put a Cape Gooseby out here because it was a you know nice-looking plant. I don't expect it to do much outdoors, but I really didn't want to leave it. Do you ever get that? You've got so many plants, you know, you've spent ages nurturing them, looking after them, you know, taking care of them, and then it comes to the time that you don't need them anymore, and, you know, you've got to set them free into the world. I just couldn't do it, so now I've got a load of tomatoes and a Cape Gooseberry outside. Don't know why. Um, well, I do know why, because hopefully they grow, but I don't expect that they will. Don't know what I'm trying to say, really. Tomatoes! Right, that's me done for another weekend. I've got to go back to work tomorrow. Mm. So, um, yeah, I wish you all well. I hope you have a good week and uh, get out in the garden and enjoy it.